Hello, you guys. Sorry, I am so late for this paint along. So, got caught up in a meeting, but we are ready to go. And this video will be up for the fall, um, all fall, and then also it'll be up on YouTube and Facebook. Okay, and then I'll probably have them up tomorrow on YouTube. So if you cannot paint along right now in this moment, that is okay because we will have this up for you for the end of this year. So we're going to be doing this fall scene here. I found this online and I thought this was a great painting. I do not know who the artist is, but I thought that'd be a great paint along to do. And it already is getting chilly out, so I thought this would be perfect to do right now. So we're going to go ahead and put our inspiration photo up here. And we're going to be painting this in a power painting session. So in just one hour-ish, we're going to be doing this painting right here. So let's go over all of our supplies you are going to need. So you need acrylic paints. So I keep my palette very, very simple. So you're going to need the primaries, yellow, blue, and... Um, red and then also values so white and black so you're gonna need those for this painting and that's all you need it gets kind of like eye candy going into the art store and seeing all those different color paints but you can actually mix the majority of them all with just the primaries and then those two values the white and the black make sure you have a paper plate and a paper towel on hand um, the paper plate is going to be our palette so you can see how I've arranged my colors here. I avoided putting the black on my palette because I just want to make sure it doesn't contaminate right now and it's also very kind of soupy so I don't want it going into the other colors at this moment. So make sure you have palette, paper towel, water container. I use these brushes here so it's just a size 8 brush so a square and a size eight round. And I just get these in a huge pack here. Uh, also, I get these at Michael's and they're just in this huge variety pack, which is very nice. It's amazing what just those nice kind of cheapy brushes, what you get for your money. And these work excellent. So I'm gonna be using those. And if you have a tiny, nice, fine brush, you could use that for doing the signature way at the end. So we're gonna go ahead and get started and grab a pencil because we're going to be sketching out our design of this fall scene right here. So you can see it's a really nice quaint scene and we have a bit of perspective happening. So if you guys looked up my video, I did a whole video on one point perspective uh, just last week. So make sure if you haven't, if you don't know what one point perspective is, Visit that video and then you can definitely hop back onto this video later on and then do this painting because that would be a really good stepping stone to do. Uh, we'll do a little bit of it, but we're not going to dive into why we're doing the perspective. We're, we're just going to put in the lines and then if you know perspective, it'll make sense. If it doesn't, just follow along with me and then check back at that video. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna be using a Sharpie so you can see it really clearly what I'm doing. I'm also gonna zoom it in a little bit more. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started. So let's go ahead and bring that in. Oops, whoa, there we go. Got some live action here. Okay, so I'm gonna have you guys do is with your pencil, let's start off with our foreground. So we're gonna do these hills right here. Now notice is that we have this walkway and it's getting bigger as it gets closer to us. So this is the foreground. So we're gonna go ahead and let's bring these hills. We're gonna start right about halfway, see where it hits on the side. This side's a little shorter, but that's okay. So we're gonna go ahead about halfway, mark here and mark over here. So that way we know where we're starting on this. Now you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna do a line gradually going towards the center. 
on either side. So we're gonna go ahead, just a nice gradual angle about here, going to about the center, just shy of the center. So our center line is right about here, like that. And we're gonna do the same thing over on this side, but this side's gonna be a tiny bit rounder. So bring that up a little bit more, round, 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 and stop about there. So each side's gonna be a little different. So now we're gonna go ahead, once you have kind of a rounded side and a little bit more of a gradual, now we're gonna go ahead and bring the bottom edge over to almost the corner of your canvas. I'm using an 11 by 14 canvas, but you can be using really any size you wish. You could do a 12 by 16. You could do even bigger, a 16 by 20. This would all be about the same. So go to not quite the corner, so just shy of your corner of your canvas. We're gonna bring this angle to about there. Now let's do the same thing over on the other side, but you can see this side, it goes even past the corner to the right. So we're gonna do the same thing, like that. And already you can start to see some perspective is happening, some atmospheric perspective. It's bigger here, it's gonna get smaller as it goes further back. So now what we're going to do is let's put in further away, we have this little bend in the walking path. So we're gonna go ahead and start right about here, put a little mark. And we are going to bring that over to there. And then we're gonna go ahead, there's a little bit of a line of like the edge of the grass. So we're gonna do that back there. And then we're gonna bring this side up a little bit higher. So that way it really looks like it's the side of a hill that goes up over there, so it's a little bit taller, it's a little steeper. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead, we did kind of this curved line, then another line behind it. We're not gonna be too picky because it's just a sketch. Now let's go over here, we're gonna do a nice tall tree, and that is attached right at the top of this hill, and it's gonna go up like that. That's our tree trunk. And this one over here, it's not on the edge here, it's a little bit in. So we're gonna go about here and here, like that. And we don't want it to be straight up and down, we want it to have a little bit of an angle to it. And then we're gonna go ahead and have some branches coming out. And it's gonna turn out totally different because we're gonna be painting. like that, and then we can go over here, back over to this big tree, and I'm just putting in a stroke and then kind of putting out two forks that are skinnier. This one can come out further, and we'll have some smaller trees that are down on the ground, a little bit further down. This one's gonna be a little bit further up so this is a definitely a power painting session, just really quick, you're not overthinking, you're just putting down your thoughts and you're working with what you first instantly put down. So it's a really good exercise to do, whether you're a painter or you're not, is just to give it a go and try. So I'm just gonna do a few really faint little marks back here. Those are gonna be some distant trees. And we have a few lines that are going out here and here with paint, so we don't need to sketch those out. We're just gonna put in those really blunt shapes of the tree trunks. And a bit more perspective, so the tree trunks would get skinnier and more vague as they go further back close up, they're gonna be more detailed. And then we're just gonna go ahead and bring these up and out. Like that, so 
So there's a really good start for us. If you want to be a little bit more exaggerated, the the angles of it getting smaller, you could easily just bring these in a little bit more and then that will make it appear like it's going even further back. And then we're gonna have these really nice oranges, yellows, greens, and blues. That's wonderful. So that's our sketch right there. So get that down, just really loose sketching of our inspiration of the fall scene. And I'm just gonna go ahead, get set up, get with the paint. Okay. Make sure you have your paper towels, your water container. All right, we're gonna get going with our round brush. Number eight I have here. So we're gonna start from background to foreground. So we're gonna go ahead and first put in some light blues in the way back. And then we're gonna transition to some green. Then we're gonna put yellow. Then we're gonna put the orange. All right, so let's start off with a light blue. So we need to mix some white. So always start off with the weaker color first. And then once you have a blob of white, grab a tiny bit of blue. I didn't wash my brush out, that's okay, because we're gonna be mixing light blue. So we're just gonna swirl that, and then your light blue could be a little darker or a little bit more paler. Thanks you guys for watching right now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, and I love this color right here, so white with a tiny bit of blue. And we're just gonna go ahead and don't worry about your sketch of those distant tree trunks. And I like to just kind of wiggle my brush back and forth. And the reason for that is because in the background we don't want too much texture. Otherwise texture makes it jump forward and we want it to look like it's really far back there. So we're just gonna go ahead and wiggle that brush with our round number eight and just go in and we're just going to be filling in this whole area right in here and a little bit up because notice we have these sky holes that go up into the yellow and the greens so we want that to look very natural so we can actually just kind of wiggle our brush up into this area above here so we kind of did this bridge kind of rainbow shape but then you'll go up into it just at random points. You don't want it to be zigzaggy. You want to make sure it's just all very organic and random. And I'm going to just go in a few spots over here and here in between these tree trunks. And it even you could do a few little marks up in here. You can always paint over it if it's a little bit too much blue. So just wiggle that brush. And make sure your hand is in the middle of your paintbrush on the handle. We don't want to be choking. We don't want to be over here. We want to make sure we're about midway or even a little bit further back. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. This is all very pale, but notice we have a very dark area of blue right in this area. So we need to go ahead and put that in. So I'm going to go ahead and just set that right in here. And my paint is still wet from the light blue, which is good because when I wiggle my brush, it will just start to blend in. See, notice as I keep moving my way up to the lighter areas, gets transitions into a lighter blue. So I'm just going to go ahead, move that around. And it's pretty dark down here along this edge. I might just add a tiny bit more blue right in here. There we go. 
okay and I'm just gonna add a little bit of this darker blue and a few of the sky holes there we go okay now on to our next color which is gonna go a little bit on top of the blue is a green so you're gonna wash your brush out and dry it off and then we're gonna go ahead and mix up a green so we're we're gonna put in the weaker color first so yellow move a blob of yellow over and let's do two blobs of yellow and then let's take a little bit of our light blue that we already have here and then we're gonna mix that into our yellow and we're gonna get a very very lime green color now to dull that out we're just gonna go ahead and make it paler so we need a tint and our tint is white so just add some white to make a tint of this lime green and beautiful we're going to use this color so it's just yellow a little bit of the light blue and then to dull it we're going to add the white so using the yellow light blue and white we're going to use this in this area right here so along the white edge where the white edge meets the light blue we're just going to kind of go in because notice it kind of already made these interesting shapes the white shapes so we're going to go in and make the white shapes that go into the light blue the light green and that will make for some really interesting leafy shapes that don't look pre-planned so very spontaneous is what we want and then we can just add a few little areas where we see some of that white showing and also we can be a little bit more adventurous and go a little bit on top of the blue sections the light blue and the mid blue that we put in in this area we can just kind of drop in a few little marks. So I'm kind of just putting a blob down and then I'm just kind of pushing that paint and little dashes to create some interesting shapes. It doesn't have to all make sense right now. What we're doing is we're just observing what's going on in this painting and then we're just plopping down the colors and those shapes that the colors create down onto our painting. So there's a bit of some green over here. There's kind of like a bush happening. And look at it, it's mixing with my existing blue right there and that's very, very lovely. So that's a good thing. And I have a little bit of this mixture on my brush so I'm just gonna use it and stick it in in a few spots here and there there we go let's just get a little bit more of that there we go I'm gonna stop there so wash our brush out again and now we're going to go ahead into some yellow so we really have to make sure our brush is nice and clean again using the round and so with the straight yellow we're going to go ahead and go into the next section so right along again that white edge dropping in the color And kind of cutting in wherever there's some white exposed areas meeting up to the light green we're just going to go ahead and drop in the yellow so we're just going to go ahead a few strokes here and there and i love the yellow it just instantly warms it up makes it that nice fall glowing effect and I'm just gonna bring it over because yellow is a great layering color. So we can even kind of go a little over the top of the yellow because we can add the orange on top of it. And that will actually look really nice because you'll see some yellow shining through. So 
Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I've decided I'm gonna fill in all of this area, even the orange areas, and we'll just plop some orange and some reds right on top of the yellow. So again, just some power painting. We're gonna get this done in about an hour. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and let's get some orange mixed up. So we're gonna go ahead and mix that up with some yellow first. And then once we have some yellow, then we're gonna go ahead. Hi, Susan, thanks for checking in. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do some red. And remember, red is very, very, very powerful. So like the blue, you just need a teeny tiny bit and it will take over. If you were to do red first and you did a blob of red and then you started adding yellow, you would keep adding more and more and more yellow and nothing would really happen with that red that you're trying to make orange. So always start off weaker color first and then add a tiny bit of the powerful colors into your mixture when you're trying to mix colors up. Okay, so I really like this orange and then I'll move to a red. So we're doing this fall scene here I found on the web. I'm not sure who the artist is, but I really appreciate this painting and I thought that'd be a fun one hour paint along, which will be available on Facebook and on YouTube after this class. Okay, so with the orange, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna do these little tiny dots first. And then those dots are gonna turn into larger dashes as we get going here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm kind of going at this diagonal, so from the right to the left, and I'm kind of dotting it in, and I'm going a little bit on top of the green section, and then we can kind of dab it around and make it a little bit more heftier, the strokes. Now it's gonna be a bit denser up at the top and then less at the bottom, so keep that in mind. So we're gonna go ahead. And again, I'm just gonna kinda of do these little dabs just to kinda of find some interesting shapes first. And my yellow is still a little bit wet, so that's okay. It's just gonna kind of blend it in a little bit more, which is good for kind of figuring out where you're heading in a painting. There we go. There it goes. So I'm just gonna go into those dabs I did. I'm just gonna kind of stroke on top so I haven't reloaded my brush so I'm just using what's on there so I'm kind of twisting it to get the excess paint off the other side and then I'm just pushing it around a little bit here and there okay so now I'm going to go ahead I'm going to dip my brush into a little bit more red and I'm just gonna add this little bit more red to the corner of my orange, not the whole thing, because I might use this orange still. So I'm just gonna go into the corner of it, and there we go, we get a little bit more of a nice, deep red orange. That's a really beautiful color. So we're gonna go ahead, similar to what we just did with the orange, now we're gonna go again with a little bit more of this red orange. Again, kind of tapping and then blobbing and then mushing. <laughs> so very, very technical termolo terminology here, but you kind of just have to get used to dabbing, dashing, and then using what you have on your brush 
to move the paint around and to create some interesting strokes that you're satisfied with yourself. Okay, so I'm just gonna go a little bit more into the wet orange areas with this color. So it's mixing right on the surface. So I just reloaded with the same red orange. And another thing I've noticed is that sometimes students get a little hung up on the original and get very frustrated that theirs doesn't look exactly like that. Um, so what I say to that is um, don't give up, just take a deep breath. Realize that you as an individual have your own style and even if you're just starting out, you still do have your own style. It's very unique, it's very different. Um, I like to think of it that when you paint, it's kind of like you have a little peek into people's souls because every person has a different style and just keep that in mind and work through it and then you start to realize what you do on accident can actually turn and ma manifest into a really interesting style for yourself in the future when you're painting, but just keep with it and um, you'll notice by the end of it, mine will look totally different from this um, artist's painting, but that's what's kind of exciting about it. Okay, so I'm just adding more of the orange that we first mixed up into this redder orange. And so now I'm getting kind of a mixture of both. Hi Lucy, thanks for stopping in. That's okay if you missed this. It's gonna be up on Facebook later and it's gonna be on the YouTube channel. So don't worry. You can definitely join in when you can and when your schedule allows. Okay, I'm just gonna add a few more. And again, we want it to be darker at the top. So it might seem kind of weird to just go in and be so bold and just kind of block it in with one color. But then we'll go in with some of the red on top. Oops, there we go. Okay, so now a little bit more red, and I'm just going to mix it into now what's left of my orange, which isn't much. And now I'm just going to continue doing these little dashes. So we're just moving to the foreground. So we were doing the cools, the greens, the yellows, the orange, now the mid-orange, red-orange, and now we're doing a little bit more red in this mixture. So we're creating depth on our painting here. Just a little bit here and there. We can always come back and add more colors, but for right now, I think this is a really great place to stop because you don't want to do too much and then you get overworked and we do not want to get to the overwork stage at all. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to have too many little dashes and dots everywhere. It's just finding that balance. Oops, let's get a little bit more yellow. That got a little dark there. Excellent. Okay, so let's stop there and let's wash our brush out really good and let's block in down in here. And we're gonna get some really nice dark darks and let's get some greens and then we're gonna get some really nice heavy horizontals for the leaves that have fallen. So go ahead and we're gonna get a little bit of some black. We're gonna be daring right now. So black and we're gonna get a little blue too. So I'm gonna put my black right next to the blue. Okay, so here's my palette now. So I added that black in. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna mix up a little bit of the blue and black together. And we're just gonna get a really nice navy blue. 
And then once you have your navy blue, so blue and black, we're gonna go ahead along this edge here that we sketched out. We're gonna go ahead, again, I'm using my round, and we're just gonna go ahead and run that color. Oh, it's a gorgeous color. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're just putting in a really, really um, high contrast right now. And so we're just gonna go ahead, run that along. There we go, and then I'm just going to go ahead to make it look like it's going up and over. We need to add a little bit of some actual upstrokes. So we're going to go up like that and up like these little wiggles every once in a while that kind of go up so it looks like the ground is mounded up and over. Like that. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, just not as severe, because this side's a little bit flatter. So we're just gonna kind of go this way. So a little bit more horizontal, very slight diagonal, just a few kind of ins and outs here. And that one's gonna go a little bit darker, because as it gets closer to us, it's gonna have more contrast, so it'll be darker. So we're just gonna do that. A little bit maybe up in here, maybe a tiny bit of this darker shadow color at the base of the tree here and here. Just a little, it looks like there's kind of a dark diagonal there. A little bit below that tree. I'm just gonna do a few kind of strokes there just so we understand the lay of the land, literally, where the leaves are gonna be laying on the grass areas there. And also, I'm gonna just do a few horizontal lines and there's gonna be tiny ones here, furthest away, and then they're gonna get a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger as they get closer to us. That way you understand how that perspective is going. And I definitely recommend doing this just so you see. So small, 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 and then they're gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and more spaced. So that way you understand where the ground is in your painting. If you really want to do it further away, they would just be super, super tiny and very, very close to each other like that. Okay, so let's go ahead. We have the black on our palette here. So let's go ahead with the black. Let's put in our trees because this is, again, lots of high contrast. So we're gonna go in and fill our trees in. If you have a skinnier brush, you could definitely go in with a skinnier brush. I'm still using the round and I'm just having my hand further back on the brush and I'm just dragging the tip of the brush, barely touching. And it's okay if your paintbrush kind of skips a little bit. That's actually a good thing because then it will look like your branch stops and then maybe like a leaves or something uh, obstruct it and it's in front and then the branch continues. And don't worry if it's not perfectly straight, just leave it. Because if you keep going back and forth, it's going to get wider and wider. Instead of having a maple tree, you'll end up with a huge oak tree. So just with these ones way back here, just little dashes. That got a little heavy handed, but that's okay. I'm not gonna go over it anymore. All right, I'm just gonna do a few faint lines like that. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead. Once we have those black lines in for the tree trunks, we can just take a little bit more paint on our brush and you can see, I have a lot on the tip of that brush. Can you see that? 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start at the tree trunk right here. I'm just gonna drag the brush out for the tree branch and then that's it. You're not gonna go back and forth. So ready, we're gonna go right here and drag, lift up on your brush and done. That's it. Now, if you notice, it's a little bit odd, that connection there, it looks like it's kind of disjointed. So what we'll do is we'll just go back onto the tree trunk and then we'll just do a little stroke right where it should attach on the bottom and then just kind of curve it into the tree trunk and then that way it looks like it's a more natural curve. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of cover that up a little bit more of the tree trunk and then let's do the same thing on this branch. So load up your brush with the black, start on the tree trunk, drag up, 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 up and lighten your touch and then lift up. So that will help you just make sure you have control and also your branches will all have different kind of character to them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. And again, I love it when my branches kind of break and then it looks like there's some leaves in front and some behind. There we go. I'm just gonna go in over here. I'm just gonna do that same thing. Start with the tree trunk. Push your brush down and slowly lift up as you get going. So that way the tip of the branch is nice and fragile. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, now let's go ahead with this black. We're going to go in and increase our contrast. So we did this kind of bluish black. Now let's go in a little bit more just with the plain black or along this edge and go a little tiny bit up and then along the edge, up again and along the edge. Not exactly covering all of the blue, we wanna keep some of that, but we're just adding another layer, some more dimension, like so. There we go. Now we have some nice contrast there. So wash your brush out really, really well. So once your brush is all washed out and you got all that black off, now we're gonna go ahead and let's block in this blue area. So it's gonna be darker blue, gonna get lighter into a very light blue way back there. So I'm gonna start off with this plain blue right here. And we're just gonna go ahead and start doing some horizontal strokes like that. And then once we have that one, then we're just gonna go ahead and add another. And we're gonna start to stagger. So you did one parallel to the bottom of your canvas, start the other one, and then you can start to do these kind of more broken strokes that are a little bit more haphazard. There we go. And so we're just gonna go back a little bit further and then we're gonna lighten up this area, but that way then we can kind of see where we're heading. And so we're just kind of scrubbing that paint in right now. Go. And I'm just gonna add a little bit back here because there's some of that shadow. We're gonna put those people in too, which will be very exciting. All right, let's do that for right now. Okay, so now let's add a little bit of white to our dirty blue brush. And we're just gonna go in with that white, go in between these exposed areas of the white canvas. And notice it's just gonna start mixing with the blue that you already have down, so that's direct painting. So you're mixing right on the surface of the canvas. I'm gonna get some more white on my brush and you're just gonna be going back and forth, blending in with the existing blue that's already on your canvas. So all back here is gonna be a very light blue and it's gonna get a little bit more saturated as you get closer into the foreground. 
It's so exciting when that mixing happens right on the surface of your canvas. spots in here that are going to turn light blue. You can see it kind of has that dreamy, damp look to it when you're blending with two wet colors at the same time. And I'm just adding a little bit more white along the edge here. And then I'm just going to carry it out so that way it's just really seamless. We don't have a white edge there. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so that is our brown. <clears throat> now we're gonna go ahead and let's put in some greens and then we'll put some yellows on the hills. So with our Green, let's go in, so yellow first. And let's take a little tiny bit of blue. And this is a pretty dark green. It's a little bit lighter over there, but there's some dark greens in there. So we're gonna go ahead, mix up a nice green. It could even be a little bit more on the teal side. Okay, so we're gonna go in with the green, so yellow and then a little bit of blue. We're gonna go into the white exposed areas here along the edge, just carefully notch those in because <clears throat> we already have an interesting shape that we created. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're just gonna go in and fill those voids <clears throat> with this nice green. And we can go a little bit on top of the shadows that we put in. And we're just going to go ahead and fill this area up and then we can always layer other colors on top because we need to put the leaves in. There we go. Now let's do the same thing over here, but this is going to have a lot more leaves. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go in similar to this side and I'm blocking in <coughs> where those white areas are just along this edge here and then I'm gonna go green up here and along that edge because it's gonna be a little bit brighter right there so if we want it to get a little bit more on the lime green side, that would be great. So a little bit more lime green on this edge, because just think that light is kind of filtering in here and there. So I'm just adding a little bit more lime green just on top of some of these green sections that we put in. Just here and there, just kind of doing a little dash diagonally. And just a few spots in here. I love that lime green. It just really livens it up. And we'll just do that. Just a few little strokes here and there. And I like seeing the strokes just right there on top of the surface of the canvas and not necessarily blending it so much. Here we go. I think that looks really nice. Okay, so this area, why I kept it white, it's gonna turn yellow. So we're gonna go ahead, wash your brush out really, really, really good. And we're gonna get some yellow on our brush. And we're just gonna go ahead and fill this empty space all with yellow. It's okay if it mixes a little bit with that green. There we 
going. So I'm just adding that a little bit more yellow onto the surface and just moving it around to cover any white areas. And I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow over here. Again, add a diagonal because we want it to look like the leaves are on the ground. So I'm going to add a little white to my uh, yellow. And I'm just going to do a few strokes like that because it's still pretty wet the green but that way we get an idea of where that is going to be just a few strokes here and there excellent we'll stop there for these hillsides on either edge and so now wash your brush out really good again okay now we're going to go into some purples down here it's kind of a bluish purple just to get some more shadows so let's go in some blue and a little bit of red so mix up two of those powerful colors okay so now we're going to go in and we're gonna add a little bit more shadows because see here there's kind of like those divots in the ground. So we're gonna add just a few strokes down in here, just very randomly close up to us because that's where we would have the most contrast. You can see instantly it just adds more dimension to it. You didn't even really think that you needed it but then you add it and then you realize that you really did need that in your painting. Just that little bit. Now we're ready to go in to some of our orange and kind of red colors and we're gonna do some dashes in here and then they're gonna to turn to orange and yellow as they go up. So let's go in with a bit of red and we're just gonna go straight red right now and we're just gonna go in and do some dashes here. So be brave and just start to do some horizontal strokes and we're still using the round brush right now. So I'm just gonna go in, I'm just kind of walking my brush along the edge here. I'm gonna do the same thing down here So this is going to be the kind of the darker section here. Like that. Okay, and with this red, since we already have it on our brush, we can go in and just add a tiny bit over here on the yellow section. And then we can do a tiny bit over here, keeping with our diagonal. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and wash that brush out. So that was all just with a plain red. Now let's go in and we're gonna put down a little bit of white because we want the yellow to really come through and we could just keep layering yellow, yellow, yellow and it's gonna turn green because we have blue here. So go into some white and we're just gonna go ahead and put in a few little dashes here and there. And so that's gonna be kind of like our base coat for where the yellow is going to go. And if there's even some yellow areas that you really want bright, you could do a few white strokes up onto the hills over here or the grassy areas. Just gonna add a little bit of white back in here. Just a little white, so then we'll layer the yellow on top of it. And we'll make it a really pale yellow so it looks like it's further away from us. If we did a high contrast yellow like that, it'd really jump forward. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's good for right now with our white kind of base, so then we'll add yellow on top of it. Okay, so now let's go in, let's add some orange on top of our red areas. So yellow first, then a little bit of red. So once you get an orange you like, then we're gonna go in and just drop a few dashes that are a little bit more thick in their application to the canvas. So I'm doing it right on top of the red sections and leaving some of that red showing. And then adding some of that orange and yellow on top of the white areas that we just put down. So you can see how they just jump out a lot more effectively with the white undercoat first. And because you put white back here, I can just go in with that yellow and it will mix right on the surface with the white and make it lighter. There we go. And just add a few more areas to apply this kind of yellowy orange layering on top and beside here and there on our canvas. And then I'm just gonna, with that same yellow and orange, I'm just gonna go in and add a few little dots here and there on the side. Just very random. Let's just add some in the green areas, so that way it's just not a huge blob of yellow. It has a good transition. to my yellow just to make it stand up a little bit more and add more dashes over here and then I'm going to go in with a little bit more red and then place that on top of the yellow the pale yellow It's gonna be a little bit darker here and here, and then it'll get a little lighter. So just more red I'm adding in slowly. And you can see when you start applying your strokes like this, you can really kind of just keep going and going and going and layering and having these beautiful colors kind of peeking in and out of each other. Washing my brush out again really nicely and let's go into and let's add a little bit let's see here let's do let's do some faint lines back here so what we'll do is we'll just add some blue and some black and a little white so blue black and a little white and so we'll get kind of a gray blue and then we'll use that for our distant tree trunks and scoot your hand back pretty far on your paintbrush handle and we'll just drag up. So barely touching. And it doesn't really have to be exactly connected on the ground. 
just here and there. Just gonna add a few on the right side of the tree trunk. There we go. We can just kind of add in a few random. It's amazing what doing those little things do for your painting. Okay, so what we're going to do with that same gray, we're gonna put in some people back here. So about in the center and then go up a little bit to the right, we're gonna do a bit of a dot. So we'll just do a little dash there and then we'll do another dash here. Okay, so once you have two kind of dot dashes, then add a little bit more paint to your brush so you have enough on the tip of the round brush. Do a little dot for the head, a little dot for the head, there we go. So we got body, head, and it really is that simple when you're doing a painting, especially in the distance. You don't want to have exactly what shoes and what uh, shirt and pants are wearing. It's just a little silhouette. You know, just do a little line for the legs, like that. A little line for the legs over here. And if you want to have the arms, you just do a little dash out on one side. Because when you're walking, one arm would be going forward, the other one behind. So you really wouldn't see the one in front. There we go. And then if we want to have like a little pet down there, we could just do a little, another little dash with two legs coming down. And then you just kind of, your mind kind of makes up the image on its own, which is really helpful when you're doing a painting. So you don't really need to put too much detail. So there you have two people and a dog. And I'm gonna add just a few more dots and dashes in front of the tree trunk. So that way it really looks like there's leaves in front, not just behind. So I'm just gonna wash my brush out really good. And I'm gonna add some orange and reds right on top of some of these tree trunks. And that way it just really sets it into this whole scene. So I'm just going in with a straight red. Just remember, denser up at the top and it will be more sparse towards the bottom with the dark, rich colors. So I'm just going in on a few shapes of the orange here and there. So again, just more contrast. So working to that foreground, just adding a few dots here and there. It doesn't have to be, you know, the root cause. Like you don't have to have it go right to every single branch and that's where it comes from. You can just have random little spots of color. And then again, your mind just kind of makes it all happen and work together. And if there's a branch or something that you're not happy with, go in with some red and you could even add a little black into the red so it's like a cranberry color. And just do a few dashes on top with this color on any of a, or a section on a branch that you're not happy with and voila, it kind of disappears. No one will know except you. <laughs> And I'm going to add just another coat of some of this red. It's so pretty. Just down here below, just to make it really nice and bright and cheerful. And just a few more in here. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna wash my brush out and with the, if you have a nice small skinny brush, something like this, this is a number two. You can definitely use that for your signature and that's it. So there's our fall scene. Thanks so much you guys for joining me and I'm gonna do my signature. Let's do it down here. So I just do initials, just nice and simple. 
So I'm just going to do a W with a dot and a G. Here we go. Finishes it off. Excellent. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you painted along, please put your uh, finished painting into the comment section of this video when I post it. That would be great. I would love to see your paintings. And if you can and if you're able, I really appreciate if you could send a Venmo donation to my account, which is WillowG3. So Willow G3, and I'm wearing a black beret in my profile picture, and that was when I went to Amsterdam, and it was an amazing trip. So that is where you can find me, and any small donation would be greatly appreciated if you painted along with me. If you cannot, that is totally fine. Um, and please follow me. I am on YouTube yet now, and so that's really exciting. So my YouTube channel is Wilhelmina Art Studio. And so that'd be awesome if you could subscribe. I'm up to now 34 subscribers, so that's really exciting. And that'd be awesome if you could follow me there. So thanks so much for painting along with me. And on Sunday, we're doing another paint along, so that'll be very fun. And it's at one to two. And you can check out the design on my website and also I'll be posting it uh, this evening too. So I'll be great. Thanks so much you guys and have an artful day.